the internet. Welcome to AEG. I'm your host, DB, and we have Goose and Marlin again. No longer sleepy. No Hair longer up. sleepy. It's still birthday boy. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. You wouldn't understand that because I'm an idiot. <laughs> maybe one day we'll do an outtake for all the stuff that has happened i wish i like i wish it just started recording like on I command just, like it was like a bio type thing it just right. re, it just read your bio chemistry and was like it oh wait, just or it, like it, when i heard the intro it just no i'm an idiot i just didn't hit a button so yeah <laughs> yeah last week it, it wasn't his fault at all it, it literally just yeah, last failed. week it did i did not not i hit the button damn it um, but no, this week I was an idiot, didn't hit the button, so we talked about uh, the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit for about 20 minutes, and you're not going to hear any of that, but you should download it anyway because it's free. So, But here on episode 28, we are going to talk about open world games since Goose just finished Assassin's Creed Origins, and I did as well. I will say this again. I am Magi. What? Protector of Egypt. And apparently you're about to get Thank arrested. You. Thank you, cops. <laughs> I gotta be careful. It, 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 listen, it may be ice. I, even, it might be, it, man. I'm a citizen, but even with this face, they may think otherwise. They're like, oh yeah, my god, look at this they guy. Don't, they, they do discriminate. They don't care. I tell you that sometimes. But I am Magi, and I will cup them down with my kopesh. <laughs> I am Bike of Siwa. God. Follow me uh, into the duat, the field of reeds. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about all uh, things Assassin's Creed Origins, yeah. and uh, in a lighter note, we're also gonna delve into open world games and yeah, how mean, they differ from one another, and you know how can they expand and be better. Just all of them need to be not as overbearing. <laughs> I'll, I'll I get think, to my rant about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll yeah, get talk, to it. Talk about so, Assassin's Creed Goose. Assassin's Creed Origins, um, I spent uh, 75 hours and Jesus 52 Christ. minutes in order to get the Platinum Trophy. How long it took me trophy. to beat it? Uh, 20 hours. Not even. Yeah, you, may, you just mainlined it, bro. Yeah. Which, actually, I want to ask you about. Part. I mean, I did some side stuff, don't get me wrong. Because you yes. had to, because you had you were under level. But did you do you remember what level did you finish at? Uh, 48. Okay, oh, that's right. It's not really fair to ask you because you used to boost. Yeah, I, I forgot. Boost. So because yeah, essentially, yeah. so um, okay, so based on what he said, technically he only leveled up three levels because you start off yes. at zero, but you can get you can get a boost to a level to forty five automatically, which allows yep. you to do some of the DLC content. Yep. Um, which I've been doing. The hidden ones is fucking good. Oh, I still want to go back and play that. Yeah, you know, I'm playing. I'm playing through it now, just slowly, because I'm like, I got the platinum, I got it out of my system, but I still want to go back through it because, like, having the platinum but still only having like sixty something percent is like driving me nuts. So I'm like, no, I need to hundred percent this entire thing in terms of the trophies, and I, I, I want to play the DLC because I like the main game enough that I didn't feel burned out and I still enjoyed it. Um, it's a, it's oh, oh for context, um, I own every single Assassin's Creed game. I've only played uh, to completion, number one. So this, to me, is brand new. It's different. I don't have a point of reference except one, which I played a long time ago. And I actually played That's crazy, like, man. Three, like three years ago. Assassin's Creed is but like was, part of my gaming life. But I'll say this. It has prompted me to go back. But one of my friends, uh, uh, one of our uh, mutual friends with Marlon, Justin, he's a huge Assassin's Creed fan. Like He loves that franchise. He's played every single one. With the exclusion of Rogue, which he's planning on going back to. And he was like, bro... It's it's downhill from here. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you played the best one with the best mechanics with the best open world, and you're not gonna be happy going back. He's like, you'll enjoy the other ones. Honestly, they're not as bad. The only ones that I the ones um, I recommend you go back to, at least, are Black Flag and Syndicate were my two other favorites. And Brotherhood see, so, was pretty good. But you're so it, he recommended. Yeah, Black right. Flag. He was like, "You're gonna like that." Black he was Flag like, was "You gotta." Very, very good. He's like, "You have to play three because you're like a fucking American history nut and you're Mr. Pro America." So he's like, "I recommend that you play that as well." <laughs> yeah. He was like, from a narrative standpoint, he's like, "There's just no way that I can't recommend the SEO trilogy." He's like, "You own it." He's like, "Some of it feels janky, especially the first one." He's yeah, like, "But you have to play it because he's like, that is what made the series what it is now. The Ezio trilogy is why this franchise is as big as it is now." I was gonna say, yeah, if if the if the Ezio trilogy hadn't came out and hadn't been good, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. 
Yeah, so he was like, you have to, he's like, you have to, you have to play. He's like, but, bro, you played one, and then you played the last one. And he's like, and you missed all the evolution in between to get to the last one that you played. Yeah. He's like, it's downhill from here. So he, he, uh, I compared it to anime. Like, I don't watch anime. Not that there's anything wrong. You know, anime's cool. I just don't really watch much anime. So my introduction to anime was Sword Art Online and Attack of the Titan. Oh, no, Attack on... What is it? Attack on Titan? Attack, Attack on, on Titan. Titan. Yeah, Attack on Titan. And he was like, bro, you complain all the time that you can't get into any other anime after watching it. He's like, he's like because you basically watched the peak. Yeah. He, he was like, you, he's like, you watch some of the best stuff anime has to offer, and then anything else to use, is gonna, you're not going to like it. He's yeah. like, this is what basically Origins is going to be. I'm like, whoa. I mean, that's, a, that's like, honestly like a really good description, because, like, if I could have played the storyline of the other Assassin's Creed games, but with... Uh, Origins mechanics, like that would be the best damn game, one of the best damn game series in gaming. Like, oh my god, they've Assassin's finally gotten to the so... point where they've perfected a lot of the gameplay. Yeah, I like the combat system. It was very Witcher, Witcher three like. Yeah, with the <laughs> triggers and because that the trigger combat is the this is the first game that ever did that. I had no issue. And the climbing is different too. The so climbing to me, one redness, it was. See again, I, I really can't compare it to anything because I don't remember. I don't remember one much, but I just thought of um, with obviously without the stamina bar, or stamina gauge. But I thought of uh, Breath of the Wild. A little bit, like, yeah. You could, you could sort of climb everything. It's seamless. For the most part, um, yeah. I remember that the first one, there were certain things that you couldn't climb, or you had to climb a particular way. Yep. And I'm like, man, if the, if all the other ones are like that, off the bat, I know I'm gonna be. It's gonna be off putting to me. Yeah. Because I'm used to climbing everything with uh, with Bayek. Yep. Who was a cool hero? I played without a beard, and then like after when I got to level forty, I'm like, I've earned this fucking beard. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, All I right. grinded it out to level forty. Um, one of the biggest complaints, and maybe Jeff, you can speak to this, or maybe you can't because you use the booster. But one of the biggest complaints that I read online. Um, and just to be clear, as soon as I finished the game, like I just saw like all these videos, I read all these reviews because that's just, I'm, I'm just nerdy like that, so I just soak up everything. You know that that was spoken about after this game launched, um, just because I like to read those things. And a lot of people were complaining that they hated the RPG system. And I'm like, well, like my OCD nature prevented me from having that obstacle that you had, because for the most part, whenever I came up across an encampment or an area, I was already over leveled because I was doing so many side quests. I was doing all the locations. I was getting all this XP that generally, by the time that I rolled around to each location that the story sort of took me you know drove me towards i was usually four to maybe even eight levels above the recommended level and i had no issues whatsoever like i focused on health in terms of my upgrades and i focused on the blade because i played it like an like like a true assassin so very rarely did i get into skirmishes and um i raised the attack power attack damage of my ranged arrows so I was using the Predator bow like crazy, and I really had no issues with being under leveled at all, at all. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> your dog was uh, saying yes. I believe you are right about that. <laughs> yeah, your dog was agreeing with you there. Like, yes, his bow was good. But no, I his like, compressor was awesome. That was like the the first time I played through it because this is not the first time I like started the game. Um, I played through it and I got to a point where I just I didn't want to do any more side content um, because the this main story was getting interesting enough that I felt super like like you said like I felt super over leveled gotcha. or under leveled. Um, so you, oh so you did come across this. Yes. Okay, so this was a complaint, not just by, like, whiny fans. This was a thing. No, yeah. Like, there were points, like, I got to a point where I'm just like, I don't want, I want to play out this story. I want to see how it ends. Um, But I didn't want to do all the encampments and all these little side quests and all this stuff that takes away from the momentum going through the main story, I guess. I agree with that. There were times where, see, again, it's different because I could have... Based on my level, I could have totally just like, Mainline the you know, critic. Yeah, I could have critical path it all the way through, but I'm like, no, I'm going for these trophies, so I'm step. I'm purposely stepping away 
to over level and my OCD is taking control and I'm just like question mark here location there this whole map is huge I must clear it now and I would right. clear every single map before even going next like I was just so OCD like okay so the game is broken into it's like one huge map but it's broken into little sub maps like provinces yeah, 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 that's a great word, like provinces or um, municipalities. And I would, I was, I, w- I was so focused on one province where you could have the demarcation line, you can have like the border, and right on the border there could be a check mark. I wouldn't do it. I'm like, no, I'm not done with this map. When I finish this map, then I'll go over. And like that's how like OCD about it I was. Meticulous. Meticulous, yeah. Um, I enjoyed the story. Um, I didn't really care much for any of the side quests. I would literally just skip them. I'm like because like skip the so, dialogue trees and stuff. Skip yeah I would yeah well there there aren't really dialogue trees but I know what you well, mean. Well not like, dialogue trees but di- skip the dialogue I guess. Yeah because so one of the things that I didn't like was that for the story you would get proper in-game cutscenes where I was like wow that looks really cool and even for some like important side quests the camera would be more cinematic in its presentation okay. but for the most part the side quests. They got this crappy ass like presentation where it was like over the shoulder and you can move the camera around. I'm like that doesn't draw me in. Like you're you're clearly stating, oh, this isn't really important because the production values are not as high as some of the other side quests or main story missions. So you're basically telling me, hey, you can check out. And that's exactly what I did. But I still think the game as a whole is one of the most beautiful games, and it's a total technical achievement. Like from a uh, 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 like a technical standpoint, like a graphic standpoint, there are no freaking loading screens, and it's one huge contiguous map. Yep. We can go up to the highest peak, and if you can see it, you can go to it. And I don't ever remember that being realized in a game, except like for Grand Theft Auto Five or something. Skyrim. Yeah. Skyrim, which I can't reference because I haven't played. But uh, wait, I was what? so imp- I own it. I haven't played it. No. I was yep. so impressed Goose. by yes. Stop what you're doing right now. <laughs> We're gonna play Skyrim. Play with you're the Switch. Go play, Skyrim. play with the Xbox. I don't to care. Play fair, with Alexa for all I care. Just I, play Skyrim. I please. Came out during that four-year hiatus of me not. You get it for uh, your uh, Switch. No, I own it on PS4. I have the um. Special I paid twenty-five edition. bucks. Yeah, I paid like twenty-five bucks for it. Go again on a, on a Wario. It. Yeah, I have it. Trust me, Goose, uh, if, yeah. if if we don't talk about Skyrim on this on the next episode, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Oh man, I, that's 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 a couple. I don't. I'm kind of burnt out on open worlds, man. I, you, no, you haven't I, seen me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just, great segue, Goose. <laughs> just just go nuts on tell us, please. What made you get so freaking burnt out on uh, open worlds? Because I can tell you that there are certain themes in open world that just gets me really frustrated. I don't mind an open world that is flush with things to do, full of interesting quest lines and side stories that just make me enjoy this world. I hate fucking fetch quests, and when and a lot of the things well, then that you probably would not like Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah, you it's, wouldn't. It's like multi. It's like multi multiple path quests where like it, one quest. I ask you to do two or three things before you complete it, and it's uh, it's a uh, grind, man. It's a it's like senseless things. Go over here, investigate that, you, capture that's this. That's the thing. That's like, grind, that's the, I am a strong, a powerful Egyptian warrior with a capesh that can cut your head off in one single swoop. Yeah, you need milk from there. Okay, yeah, I'll go get it. Um, oh, do you need some eggs as well? Yeah, I'll go get them as well. Like, yo, like it's why? Why is there so many fetch quests in 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 open world games? I'm like, no. Nah. Because they don't know how to pad out but they want you to experience this world so they want to give you reasons to go out into it but they don't know what to do yeah like justin i told so justin played it as well before our aforementioned friend and he was like bro like the other assassin's creed he's like you can take like three of those maps and that was the whole game i was like what he's like yeah he's like take like three three of the maps he mentioned a couple ones. He was like, uh, "Take like Alexandria." They were dense uh, though, like exactly. especially well, he, like the yeah. the set like two where you're like in Rome and stuff like that, and like Syndicate was really dense as well. Um, so I think the biggest issue, I think Jeff uh, is running the money with that. It's like, so I think, and it's not easy, but in relation to, I think making the world is easy. 
but giving it content is what's hard. And it kind of sucks because I love the setting of Egypt and playing this game has me even more pumped for Odyssey. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, growing up as a kid, I, I love all agree. mythology. Yeah. But I was like, man, Egypt is cool. And when I was a kid, I was obsessed with Egyptian stuff and the mummies and cool. And I, you know, that, that was cool. But man, as a kid, I was really into like, uh, Greek and, and Roman mythology. Right. And I've, I've read reports, um, where developers have said or stated that Odyssey is about roughly two times bigger than um, yeah, I remember you saying something about that. Than Origins, although one of them said that there's a caveat to it because lots of it is uh, water. it's it's water, but still yeah. the fact that it's but, so I mean big. black a lot of Black Flag was water, and there were still islands that you could ride your boat to and like get off and go like do a little mini side quest and stuff. Which like is that. why I really want to play uh, Black Flag. You really should play Black Flag, dude. It's so I, good. I had lots of fun playing as Aya. Um, yes. So okay, so the game alternates. If you alternates. like that, then you will love Black Flag. Oh, I love it. Because that's the majority of the game. Oh man, damn Jeff, I want to play Assassin's Creed now? It's <laughs> I, I really, I mean, a Black Flag now. I really, really liked um, the ship combat in the game. I really, really enjoyed it. It's very similar. Um, oh, the gameplay, like, uh, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a grind in regards to loot. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. Marla, have you played Origins? <sighs> it's, it's, the grind no, is not that just, bad. It, oh, like, you've like, played, oh, you've played Origins. I, I play Origins. I just don't like that, that it's so fetch quest-like. I, 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 I like the grinding when it comes to the loot. There's, there's some progression to it, and I enjoy that. I just don't like fetch quests. Like we totally like ripped the Groot line, uh, the loot grind from certain like uh, like uh, Diablo three, where you yeah. have like common, rare, exotic, legendary, yeah. and I'm like, oh that's cool. And then Justin's like, yeah, that's never, that's never been done before. That's new. He's like, you, that's not gonna happen in other Assassin's Creed games at no. all. Like you don't you don't get to. Sh-. He's like, you can choose weapons, but you're not. It's not gonna be to this degree of granularity. I'm like, oh okay. Um, you really can play however you want. Uh. The story I thought was lackluster. Like it's sort of like a revenge tale, and they 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 sort of it's sort of like the, it is the origins of Brotherhood. Like this is one cutscene where I'm like, yes, oh Are shit. Are you talking like, about the one where they're sitting on the beach? No, that was towards the end. Um, I love uh, we that cutscene though. And and we can do a full spoilers mode I, because it's the game's been out for almost. I was gonna seven say it's been months. out for a while. Okay, so yeah. we're gonna spoil the end of Assassin's Creed Origins. But before we Fast spoil it, bo- yeah, that, that's okay, not, that's ahead. not the one that I'm referring to. I'm referring to. Well, hold on. Um, is this spoilery? What is? It, no, is is the what you're about to say spoilery? Um, well, yeah, but it's not okay. like a. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, not like, it's, it's not like the end, okay? Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm not, so, yeah, I'm not going to fast, the end. Fast forward five minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. no, the when they're sitting on the beach and, and the music starts swelling and, like, they talk about, you know, what they're going to do and what they're going to, you know, bring about and the change that they're going to be, and they start using words that the Assassin's Creed games have kind of... It it was just such a cool moment, and they started playing the original Assassin's Creed theme, and it was just fucking phenomenal. Yeah, the fact fact that they weren't even known as a Brotherhood at the beginning, they were just known as the Hidden Ones, which is what I'm playing through as a DLC. Yes. I was like, oh, wow. And then, uh, I mean, I guess you've earned this, so I guess you can talk about it, like the way they get the symbol. You can go into that. Yeah, I thought that was a little weird. Uh, yeah, I thought it was corny. I'm like, wow, he drops corny. that, and that's how they get it. It was like, cool, but it was still corny. Yeah. W- what it is, Marlon, is uh, they had a. It was a bird skull, and he dropped it in the sand when he was talking. And when Aya picked it back up, the way that it landed did the 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 like triangle with or the uh, the point the arrowhead point with the the under cir- like circle. Yeah. Half circle. Yeah. When you saw it, I'm like, and I didn't even see it coming. Like when she picked it up, I was like, oh, really? Right. Like, oh, okay. I, I, I guess that's cool. And then you see it painted on the one roof. Yeah, they're like headquarters. They have like this headquarters type thing, yeah. which is really cool. Oh, and the way, 
Um, actually, let me talk about the initial scene. I totally forgot about that. The initial scene that I was uh, mentioning was that I was referring to was there's a scene where like um, I think after Cleopatra rises to the throne uh, when Ptolemy is seated and she and she you know she's with Caesar and she's like, hey, I am I am the monarch now. Um, she's basically given up on the people that brought her to the dance and kept her at the dance. Yeah, which was by Aya. Which yeah, I didn't. I actually did not see that coming. Yeah, me neither. I um I, I never trust politicians. Um yeah. so I was like, Oh, can I say this? This is like I guess pervy, but man, those Egyptian female NPCs have like the fat asses, man. Yeah. I was just like, Oh, this is true, this is Egypt, this is Africa. Yeah. Africa got big yeah, booty women. This that's, is true. That's 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 basically true, man. Um I sent a picture to the chat <laughs> about that. But anyway. Like, um yeah, they were like all like uh in the like this little meeting or whatever and they're like yeah the brotherhood i'm like oh shit this is how it starts right like this is the catalyst like they don't go into detail but they, they don't say anything about the creed or anything but they allude not, to not hey right we're, away at least. not right away but when i saw that i'm like oh i got that Th- that i got right away i'm like oh this is how they start this is it and then like it's really cool the way like the um the cutting of the finger started it was yeah. like it was a mistake on a stupid on a stupid assassination mission in a bathhouse. Yeah, I was like, like it's like your one of your first assassinations. Like a rookie, like a totally rookie mistake. Yeah, he he goes to to use the blade, but he doesn't move his finger, and so it literally slices the end of his finger off. Yeah, I mean he he kill he gets the kill at the same time, but he slices his finger off and he freaks and he has to bail after he's assassinated the guy. And that's basically how it starts when the Brotherhood starts. You know, this is, I forgot what the lady's name is, but this is one NPC character, a female, who's like, hey, I'm committed to the cause, so I'll be cutting my finger too. And then that just became a thing. And then you get like a reveal that um, Aya is, in fact, Amonet, which is an Egyptian goddess, right. who's also called the Hidden One. And I'm like, as, as a fan of Egyptian lore, I'm like, oh, I get that. I don't need to be an Assassin's Creed fan to get that. That's fucking cool. Uh, that I liked. Um, that was really fun. Is it okay if I can go into the Hidden Ones DLC real quick? Uh, I mean, yeah. So, just real quick, there's this, uh, the Hidden Ones DLC takes place four years after the main game. And it's sort of like an older, grizzled Bayek. And there's this one mission. So in the main game, again, this is still spoilers. In the main game, there there's this one dude, the Scarab, that you have to murder. Um, he is a slippery little one where he lies and has you. You actually complete a side mission along with him to help him, and then later do you realize, oh, this is the dude that I've been that I've been aiming to kill all along. Oh, is that the one where like it's you, the black guy? You kill him, and then his his like son and his wife are there. That's ex- that the yes, that's yeah. exactly it. I'm glad you set that up. So, um, in the main game, you kill him basically in front of his wife and son well like he he talks about like how bad of a person he is and all this stuff like you have dinner with him and his family and everything yeah mm-hmm. and then yeah, like he, you later find out that this guy the whole time was, you. was the bad guy yeah so basically you have dinner and you drink some wine and you like just go out of it he poisons you and then when you wake up you're in the middle of the desert uh the only thing that's above the sand is your head and he's like, oh, I am the scarab, and yeah, bye. And he just leaves him to die, which is a stupid, it was just a stupid movie. You should have just killed him. But anyway, he leaves him to die. Uh, Bayek calls his horse. His horse gets him out of the ground, and he comes back and assassinates him. And this sort of like a Kill Bill Volume One feel, at least for me, mm-hmm. where uh, the the blonde haired Uma Thurman character kills uh, Vivica Fox's character, and she realizes that she did it in front of the girl. She's like, hey, little girl. I didn't mean to do this, but, you know, when you're of age and you still feel raw about this, like, I'm waiting for you. And I love that because I'm like, man, that's Kill Bill Volume 3 right there. That little black girl. <laughs> and she, that, I want to see it. I wanna, there's a story. I want to see that film. And although Bayek didn't say those exact words, in The Hidden Ones, there is a mission where four years later, that kid is all grown up and he tracks you down. He sets you up and tries to kill you. And I'm like, oh, that is fucking cool because you're directly referencing something from the main game. That's actually really cool. And I and I appreciate that. That yeah, that, that that was awesome. I won't say what happens in the mission, and I won't say how it goes down, but it's it's really fun. Cool. But yeah, so let's let's talk about some more ult- open world stuff. So like, uh, what do you like? What do you not like? 
No. Uh, my biggest problem with open world games is basically what Marlon mentioned. I'm not a big fan of fetch quests. Um, and if they are, it, it needs to be more than just a, an XP incentive like it was in Assassin's Creed. Yeah. So just to be completely transparent, the reason that I almost 100% of Assassin's Creed and I spent as much time as I did was because I was going for the Platinum Trophy. And there was one trophy called Old Habits, which I will share a real fun story about. I think you guys will like it. Um, okay. The Old Habits trophy requires you to um, do not every single side quest, but do every single location in the game. So the, the game, uh, when you... When you uh, you don't have to you don't have to do the towers thing to unlock the map, which is a good thing. But for the people who are chasing the, after the trophies, you really should. There's, so there's 58, I believe. There's 58 towers in total in the main game, and then there's 20 extra split between the two DLCs, so 78 in total. Mm-hmm. But if you unlock all 58, when Senu flies, um, he can see further, and that unlocks points of interest on the map. And in order to get this trophy, you must complete every single point of interest on the map, whether that be a star constellation, whether that be a fort, whether you have to loot treasure. Where you, so there's, there's different points of interest. There are ones where you loot treasure. There are ones where you kill bosses. There are forts where you have to loot treasure and kill bosses in order to in order to uh, complete it. Mm-hmm. There are ones in which you have to go like into an animal lair and kill the chief animal among them. There's a whole bunch of those littered all around the map, and I did every single one. Now, the story is, um, I'm about, not including the final ones that you need after you finish the main story, but I'm about four to five locations from completing the ones before the main story. And there was this one that glitched out on me. It was a location by the aqueduct in Cyrene. Oh, and you needed to loot three treasures in order to uh, clear that particular location. And I looted two out of the three. And the third one was glitched. I didn't have the loot option. And I freaked the fuck out. At this point, I was at 68 hours. And I freaked. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, I, of course this would happen to me. Of course this would happen to me. <laughs> Same thing happened with uh, God of War. With God of War. I'm like, of course this would happen to me. And I, I read the trophy guide. They said I shouldn't have an issue if I had played it all patched. I, had, I was playing on the latest patch version. I made sure of that. There was no save between it because I had never played it. I'm like, oh, my God. I looked it up on Reddit. What did I need to do? I, I you know, come back, go back, go to another location. I did that. Uninstalled the game. I uninstalled the entire game, and I installed it back. Nothing. Nothing. I uh I used a prior I used a prior save that was like about an hour an hour behind. Still didn't work, and that took me a little that took me a little longer because I needed to make sure that it didn't overwrite the current save that I had, so I didn't lose that one hour of progress or one and a half hours of progress. Right. Nothing. And I was I was I'm lie I was desperate. I really was desperate because I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to do this shit again. And right. I was ready I was ready to commit and do it again. That's how committed I was to this platinum. I'm like, I'm gonna Jesus. get this shit. This shit is gonna be mine. <laughs> yeah. And. I literally just fast traveled to Alexandria and fast traveled back to Cyrene to that to that point in time. And it popped. And it popped. I'm like, oh, thank fucking God. It was a little it was like a two hour detour, but I got it done. And that, that, that was like the only that was like the biggest obstacle to the platinum. Because I'm like, <laughs> if I can get the old habits trophy, which is to get every single location on this map, then the rest will come. I have no issue. And the very next day, the next day, like around 10.30 or whatever, I don't know when I popped Platinum, but I, I got it. That's funny. Yeah, man. Um, I so been, I kind of wanted to, with the open world stuff, I kind of wanted to get into something. Um, I don't know if it's you guys, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but do you guys feel that most games now are too open world? I do, but that's because... The hardware lends for it, and they continue to sell like hotcakes. Yeah. So I don't want to go into a tangent, although I probably will. But we have to look at we have to look at Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is the template, and Ubisoft in particular has been chasing after that template for years. For years. I mean, you look at Watch Dogs, you look at Assassin's Creed, you look at Ghost Recon. There's a very UB way of how they do their open world games, and for some people they like it, for some people they don't. Um. I don't see myself doing every, everything that I did in this game on other UB games only because I was, again, I was chasing the trophies. Um, but I think there's lots of room for improvement 
with open world games in terms of content. Like uh, before the podcast started, I said Witcher 3 was the best open world game I had played, even though I just poured 60 hours into it and never finished it. But that's because the side quests, many of them, not all of them, were just full of great narrative story. And it felt so different from any other open world game before it because it just wasn't a fetch quest. Mm -hmm. It was like the Bloody Baron. Like everyone knows the Bloody Baron quest. Like everyone's played that quest. It's like one of the it's like one of the best quests. And it's a side quest in that game. And just the production values, the cinematography of the cutscenes, you don't get that on many side quests. You look at Horizon Zero Dawn, which is a beautiful game, but the side quests were shitty there too. Yeah. It's like do this, do that. I'm like, uh like Visually, some of the locations are really cool, but the story just is not up to par when it comes to certain open world games. Or like when you think of Ghost Recon, it's it's like a it's not a loot fest, but it's like a uh God, what's the word? Look, help me out here, Jeff or Merlin. It's like a collectathon. Yeah, it's yeah. it's literally just a collectathon. And I'm like, man, it's cool if I want to catch up like on Giant Bomb or Easy Eight, but if I really just want to play a game and pay attention to the story, like I'm not gonna enjoy that. Question. Actually, I love that you actually mentioned that, that uh, Bloody Baron a quest. Guess who are the writers for Dying Light 2? The people who made the Bloody Baron quest. Thank you. Yeah, I read that's, that too. And that's I'm like I really really want now. Now I'm interested in Dying Light 2. <laughs> now I really want to see. Screw how you! You should have been interested before. <laughs> it, it's 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 it, the thing is this though. Like how could I play be that, interested play in a freaking game. movie? No, how could I be interested in a game that every single time I play it, I have no fucking. <laughs> it's a good game. Uh, but the one thing that that you mentioned about the collectathon was that, like, it it, it harkens back to like when I, when I used to play, you know, Banjo and Kazooie and you know Donkey Kong, is that even though it was a collectathon, it it was fun. You know, you 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 felt like um like you were progressing towards something. You know, uh, but a lot of the a lot of the quests nowadays when it comes to open world. Don't really like add anything to the storyline. It's like, like I'm this assassin. For example, let's take for example Assassin's Creed 2. There was a side quest where basically all I had to do was just get money from one person to another person, and then go kill another guy. But had nothing to do what I was doing with in, in that point in time during the mission. And I was like, why am I doing this? <laughs> why? Why? What is the point of this? Why? What's the point of me doing this? Why did I have to go kill this guy? And it's not giving me anything in value. Doesn't give me a loot. Doesn't give me a, a better quest. Doesn't progress a skill tree to make it easier for me in the game. No, it's just out of there as a fluff. It's just something to uh, pad a, a yeah, to pad it up. Yeah. Just pad it up. And for me, I hate that. You know. I get it, you know, developing games takes time and, and you know, making a, a truly open world that has a living environment, it's just, it's very difficult. I get that. But it, it, you got to put a little bit more thought into the, into the side quests, you know. Um, with Witcher 3, it felt fun. With uh, Final Fantasy 15, it felt somewhat tedious, but I was like, okay, I get it. But with uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, it felt to me like that they added the side quests as a way for the person to level up to be able to be ready for the main storyline. And while in some games works well, and this one kind of felt kind of like, like disjointed. It, it felt like here's a storyline, Here's a side quest. If you want to progress with this storyline, you gotta do this. As opposed to, oh, this leads into this and this leads into this. But, I, I don't know, it just, just felt weird for me. I, I enjoy the game, but I just kinda of felt repetitive. Did, did you like the open world itself? The open world was fun. Like the, the, the cinematics, the, 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 the looking at Egypt um, yeah. at ancient times is like if if they can make Rome and Greek and, and and you know like the Greek Isles just look like this, I'll be happy as a man. I'll say I'll say this. One of the things that like I love Egypt as a whole, although some some of it was barren as fuck. 
Um, and uh, the story touches on certain themes of like imperialization and, or, you know, uh, the Romans coming in and taking yeah. over shit and, hey, my culture is better than yours type stuff. They, they touch on it lightly. But, but as I was playing the game, one of the, this is going to sound fucked up, but one of the things that got me hyped for Odyssey, I'm like, nothing against Egypt. I, I would love to go there in real life and, and, and go to the pyramids and stuff. But I was like, man, I got to give it up to these fucking Romans. These motherfuckers, these motherfuckers can build some nice ass buildings. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I'm like, 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 oh, okay. so, look, look if, you, if you just look at oh my God, like the when I first play Assassin's Creed Origins and I was walking into the dunes and I saw the pyramids, I was thinking, oh wow, they they are they nailed it, and I want to have that moment again in ancient Greek. Like I just want to see. I want to go to the Isles of of of, of, of Greek, and and just see. I want to see. I want to go to Sparta. I want to go to Athens. I want to go to um, not Mykolos. Um, what's the name of the of the Isle? Greek Isle. Some Greek island. It's um, I'm looking at right now because it's just it's. I know what I'm talking about. <sighs> It's I want to go to Hydra. I want to go to Rhodes. That that's the one. Oh, okay, uh, Rhodes. Rhodes. Oh, oh, that's right. They should have the Colossus of Rhodes back then. Yep. Oh, yeah. I want to I, 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 I have a good probably didn't hit. I want to go to Crete. I want to go to fucking Scythus, man. I want to go to fucking Caria. Oh, okay, follow on. I'm like, can you please break this game already out for the love of God? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You totally. Yeah, I'm glad like, you just, just, that. I totally just, forgot just, about the Colossus of Rhodes. Oh, I got an Axos, man. I got a pot. I got a pot mouse, man. It's if they can just bring that to life and and give good quests, okay? That makes me want to go explore those islands. Makes me want to explore those worlds. I'll be that'll be the game of the year for me. But if they don't, it's just gonna go to to relegate it to Assassin's Creed Origin, which is like a good game, but you know, again. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I, I I've seen a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey gameplay after uh, I beat Origins, and it sort of it 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 sort of looks the same. I hope that the that the addition of, of a dialogue tree will shake up the story and the side quests. Um, but I, I I'm expecting more of the same. Not that it's a bad thing personally for me, because I'm looking forward to play it. Um, especially after Origins, I'm like man, like. Like the biggest compliment I can play, play Origins was that after I finished it, even though I was a little burnt out on the open world, I was I waited like a day or so, and I'm like, man, I'm ready to do this hidden and one stuff, in, independent of my like need to get the trophies, even though I got the platinum. I'm just like, no, I I really just want to play the hidden ones because I want to play that. And then I saw some gameplay for Curse of the Pharaohs, and I'm like, oh, I definitely got to play that. That looks dope as fuck. Like it's it's out there. It's super wacky and crazy, and like the things that you fight look super cool. So that's like the biggest compliment I can pay. Ubisoft. Like one thing that Jeff said that really stuck to me during the week was he was like, "Bro, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of game in there," and he was totally right because like there is so much game, even though a lot of it is senseless, but there is still a lot of game there. So let me ask you. uh, Before before you go, uh, continue. So let me ask you this question to you, Jeff, and this question to you, Goose. Out of the DLC, which one do you enjoy the most? I didn't play any of it. I've just played the hidden ones. Um, the map in the Hidden Ones is basically two two provinces and a sea area. It's basically it's along a coast. It's called Sinai. It's along a coast. Um, it's very hilly and rocky, which is one of the things that I didn't like um, about Assassin's Creed because I just wasn't a fan of the arid parts. I was just really a fan of like the the Greek and uh, the Roman the Roman architecture. I love those places. And obviously the pyramids of Giza and stuff like that. That was awesome too. Oh man, I can't believe. Uh, I know we're almost about to wrap up here, but the tombs. Like if you ever play Assassin's Creed Origins, you have to do the tomb. Like one of those. It's one of the coolest fucking things in that game. Um, in fact, I was reading from Kotaku yeah. yesterday that there is a hidden chamber that they found out about after the game came out, and uh, Ubisoft like quickly put out a statement saying, "Oh no, it's in there." And people are like, what? How, like, it, we just found out about it now. He's like, no, we we worked with an architect who um, had theorized that that was there already. So we included it in. We believed him enough to. I was like, whoa, that is fucking badass. That is right. great marketing. 
and the fact that you guys had the foresight to say, no, this French architect who's been harping about this for fucking years, that there's this thing there that people say there isn't, but he was vindicated. It's there. I'm like, whoa, that is so cool. Yeah, no, those the tombs are cool. Um, the the ancient relic things, which is, it sort of ties into. Um, and I don't want to spoil this for you, Jeff, because if you crit path it, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that you missed that I really wish you would have played. Um, there are these like uber tombs within tombs. Yep. And man, I uh, you have to collect about 50 silica uh, little things or whatever. It's called silica. It's like a it's like a like a currency. So you have to collect 50 of those alongside um, uh, doing every single of the, of the 12 star constellations. And you get this sick ass futuristic uh, outfit called the Isu armor, which uh, I got because I just wanted it. Yeah, <laughs> we saw the picture. The thing yeah, is, this though, so. it's, it's 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 like he's like me, like he is exactly like me when it comes to Monster Hunter World. Is that oh. There's a new output in the game. How can I get it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's... That's how it used to be with, like, Destiny, when they would come out with those exclusive armor uh, sets. It's, uh, yeah, don't lie, Marlon. You used to do that same shit, too, for Destiny. But even worse. You know, you used to chase after all those. Th- see, that's the thing. I was so... Like, I, I think I learned my lesson in Destiny. I think that that's the, what, like, got to me. It was, like, I got... So so like I need to get this, and I need to spend hours upon hours and hours to get it. And I, when I finally got it, I'm like, oh, okay, right. <laughs> like I, it, I feel you there. It's never as good as what you imagine it to be in your head. Like no item in game will ever surpass the expectations that you have upon that item before you're getting it. Yep. Like best example that I can get get to you was a uh, Gallahorn. Because they hyped this thing up for me to make the best gun in the game, the best thing in the world. And I, I want it. I need it. I need it. I need it. When I finally got it, I got it about two weeks before they nerfed it. So I, I, got, to play, <laughs> I got to play I got to play with it before it got nerfed. But when I play with it and I used it, I'm like, okay, you know, it's, it's a good rocket launcher, but it's it's decent, I guess, you know? It's, uh, it's, I, 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 I won't say anything because I don't want to get into Destiny. I'll just keep shut. So, yeah. so what, what I was trying to get to you is like, it's when I think you you enjoy more the grind, the fine, trying to get that thing, as opposed to finally getting it. You know, the it's not the destination, but the road kind of thing for me. So, when... I'll, just, I'll just say real quick before you continue, I'll just say that Galahorn in particular was totally a weapon of its time. And, like, I don't think two weeks was, was enough for you to feel like, oh, what I grinded for was worth it. it uh, in, in many ways, Galahorn was a get-me-out-of-jail-free card mm-hmm. for many, like, uh, high-end level activities. And I, I don't think two weeks before they nerfed it was enough time for you to be like, oh, this is why it's so highly regarded. You may have seen videos, but unless, like, you experience it yourself, like, you're about to die and you just pull the shit out and it just gets you through or you melt the boss. Or, or, or you probably did experience it with other teammates. But unless you're doing it yourself, it's, I think it's hard to, to feel that power that it gives you or, or you know why? feel the power that you have when, you, when you're playing with it. You know why? It's because when you play in a video game that, that – because it happened with the Vex and it happened with the Soros. I'm really uh, disappointed in myself that I brought Destiny up again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll just keep it very short. Is that since you get so used to not having this overpower weapon, you learn how to beat the game in other ways. And yeah. you, got, you didn't get so rely on a weapon, and and you couldn't, you couldn't. So you just got, you just got good. In Destiny Two, you don't have that, and in Monster Hunter World, you definitely don't have that. <laughs> right. Uh, so in Assassin's Creed, it it's more of the skills that you get in the game, as opposed to like just getting this huge overpower weapon that's just gonna melt everything in the game. Or like it, boosting yourself to level forty five and just burning through yeah, all the quests. Yeah, like a certain uh, JB person that I know. Um, yeah, but you know what, JB? Like, I know some listeners may hear that and think it's like a cheating way out, but I don't. I I, uh, I don't want to get into this, too, but I will just real quick. I, I 
think that's totally fine. Like there are people with different lifestyles. Like for example, like you, like you have a daughter, you have responsibilities. Like you're an adult, right? Like you, you didn't have a week off like me to 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 to, to sink seventy six hours into the game, right? And I was very right. lucky that I did because I'll be honest, if I didn't have that week off, I, I I probably would have never played this game. I'll be honest, I probably would have never had the time to play off to play this game because just the way I am with games, I'm right. very I, I'm very completionist. I need to complete it. Right. So I don't think there's anything wrong with like doing what you did. Like, hey, you got to enjoy the story that probably otherwise you wouldn't have enjoyed. So like for people, who, I'm not saying you, Marlon, but I'm saying in general, like for people who think like that's cheating or like backwards, like, no, like you're back no. Steve, or girl. Or whatever. I, th- I think it's this. If the developers put it into the game, they put it there for a reason. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of I think like the majority of games, like open world games specifically should do something like that. <laughs> Like it really, it, it really helps out. Like, hey, or I get to experience do like, your story. Or do like what uh, what Horizon did. What they it wasn't until after the game was already out, but I can't remember. It was like story difficulty level where literally the enemies like died extremely easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they they made it like a like a it was enjoy like the story than mode. Easy. Yeah, like you, like you looked at them and they died or something like that. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish a lot of games did that, honestly. Specifically, like I said, open world games, since you know, we're staying on topic. I just, like, you made a, a phenomenal point, Goose. Like, I don't have the time anymore, and I wish I did, you know, but I have stuff I gotta do, especially because it being summertime and I want to, you know... Like just spencing around, I got you. You know, it's... Right. it's I mean, yeah, it's... in the wintertime, that's one thing. I mean, my girlfriend made a good point about this uh last weekend she because we, we were talking i was i was like talking about you goose i was like uh i was like man i can't believe goose sunk that many hours into assassin's creed and i said and i beat it and i only put like 12 hours into it and you know he put you know 70 <laughs> hours or you know 60 70 hours into it and she's just, 70 like, 76 the, into the main game right like she's just like you know you don't have time to do that anymore and i said yeah you're right it's like it's like I know uh, sooner or later. But I still want to play these that. games and enjoy them. But like you said, my lifestyle is just different. Exactly. Yeah. And and there's absolutely like like developers should be cognizant of that when they when they create their games. And that's sure, one of the... I'm sure there. I mean, clearly we've seen in some cases like Horizon and Assassin's Creed that we just kind of mentioned. Like they. I mean, well, the Assassin's Creed I think is an actual kind of fluke of a case. Because it's so because... darn big. Yeah. What's that? It's so darn big. It's so big, and it's one of those things where they probably weren't thinking of that specific thing, at least not – because they want, they want people to play their DLC, so they need yeah. to give them a reason to get to the level without maybe having to grind it all out. Didn't Witcher do something? I think you said Witcher did something like that where you can start at a certain level in order to play Hearts of Stone or the other one. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay, so they did the I exact same thing. I don't know if you thing. can go back and – play the main game when you do that oh because if okay. you can dude i'm downloading that shit right now. <laughs> i'm pretty i'm pretty sure that you can because i remember um after i went back to it after initially it came out and the dlc had come out and stuff uh they, it gave me that option of hey you can you can rank up to this particular level so you can do hearts of stone right off the bat um but i'm pretty sure it doesn't lock you out of the main game I'm, Which will probably help you like fly through it. I was going to say, I'm yeah, about to check. Because <laughs> I will be playing some Witcher because that would at least give me a reason not to get... Because that was the thing that I... Like, I started playing it and then I got like... I died really fast with like with a pretty much common enemy because that combat system is not simple. It's very... The combat um, system in, in uh, Assassin's Creed is not really simple either. Uh... No, no, it's it. No, it's not uh, in comparison to the other games. Yes, uh, it's a lot of blocking and parrying. There's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's, there is it's that, more complex. But it used to be like in the Ezio time, and even up through, I think through Syndicate, I want to say, or it was basically wait for your opening. Yeah, you literally. Well, no, you literally could hold down a button, and as soon as they attacked, you hit counter, and it was like an instant like counter kill move. Like an animation. And literally, that thing. was combat. You see, the thing Very is, you looked like a badass, but you had to. It, all it was, all it was, was about timing. The thing is this, though, is that talking about just open worlds in general, is that when you go back and play uh, old open world games, let's say the, the original Grand Theft Auto Two, well, not the original, but Grand Theft Auto Two, uh, go back and play Infamous, go back and play Infamous Second Son, is that 
you look back and you think the developers have learned how to get better at making open world games. Because I remember the, the original Infamous game. I the reason why I didn't go for the platinum trophy was because of the stupid ass lightning thing collectors you have to freaking collect. To I get love them. those. Like, you know, there's a dude who he basically made like a makeshift map, letting know where all of them were, and I I didn't know about it until after I got them. God, that's the thing that that really annoyed me because for me it was. I was going for it. I think I got in about 45 of those electrical knots in the game, but I didn't know where exactly in the map I got them. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I didn't know where and I couldn't put up a map and tell me, okay, you already got this from this area. You got that from that area. No, I literally would have to go download this map that had really crappy resolution and then go through the entire freaking game trying to figure out which one I'm missing and which one I'm not. I mean, the coolest <laughs> thing was that, like, you can press... I think you can de- you can depress R3, and, like, Cole would send out, like, a, like feelers, like a wave. And if you were in the vicinity of them, you'd know. But if you were far out, you'd have no idea where they were. Yeah, so you had to, right. go, like, you had to go to the area, look them up. And, yeah. So, yeah. So that's the thing, like, if you're going to put a lot of collectible, like collectible items... Orbs. Yeah. Oof. I've heard... I've never played Crackdown, but I've heard of those. Uh, oh, don't remind me of that, please. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this shit again. No, no, no. Just, just think of those things from Infamous uh, Goose, but just it's dial up to ten. Similar. But just dial up to ten. It's, yeah. it's so fucking frustrating, man. But like, yeah, I can see like that being complained with open world games. Marlon is, is collectibles. It's like at least make a map that's already ingrained in the game that just makes you go, okay, you're missing this, you're missing that. The thing I love about that with God of War is that. Okay, you know we're gonna make this open world game that we that never made before. We got a war. I wouldn't even consider that an open world game, really. I consider it because, a quasi open world. Yeah, game. yeah, it's like the way that our, our Naughty Dog calls it, like open linear. Yeah. Because like it has like linear sandbox. It has wide open linear sandboxes, but, but it isn't it open world in the truest the sense. Set pieces too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because you you have that feeling of an open world, but it's not one in its truest sense. Right. What I mean is like the map is tells you, okay, this is all your stuff you're missing from this area, but it's all right there for you to like, okay, so you're missing this, you're missing that, you're missing that. But with uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, it was, here's this huge map. Oh, you're missing something. Well, too bad for you. You got to look it up. <laughs> I agree. I agree, a hun- I agree 100%. Like in open world games. The standard to get in a bike, get in a car, get in any vehicle, whether even if it's Roach in Witcher 3, you press triangle or you press Y. I can't. I don't know about PC. That is a standard, right? No one messes around with that. No one's stupid enough, like Saints Row or something, like, you know, hey, we're going to use Square. Square is how you get into a car. No, the language is already spoken for. The design language is laid bare. You press spot, you press triangle or you press Y. That's how you get into your ride, right? We all know this. Yeah. They should do that as well. With open world games, like hey, we're, you're gonna have a collectathon. It's an option if you want to do it. But hey, just like God of War, we'll tell you. We won't tell you where it is, but we'll tell you. Hey, this is what you need, and there'll be a tracker letting you know if you got ten out of ten or nine out of ten. Yeah. They should have that in every single open world game. It will make things so much easier for folks like me who like like to collect all this shit for trophies. Because it it literally turns this game that will be like you know a forty five fifty game. You're thinking you know. 50 hours into a video game, you know, it, it's a decent amount of time. No, it turns it into a 75, 100, 200 hour game. Right. And you're like, God damn, bro, like, like, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, it's, it's, that's my main gripe with the open world games. I feel it. But, uh, well, you guys wanna, I don't wanna wrap up here. Let's wrap it up, fellas. Right, any, any Bye. more, any more thoughts on open Come world on. stuff or? Um,. I think after the hidden ones and the curse of the pharaohs, I don't, I don't think I'll be playing an open world game for a while. Yeah, was so you gonna close the book until Spider Man? I would assume, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm looking forward to. I was say, uh, I'm thinking. I'm trying to think what my next. I mean, if if what you said about The Witcher is true, I'll probably try to start. I'm always positive, Jeff. You should look into it because that way you'll gonna... you'll get to ex- you'll, you'll get to experience it. I think after this, I'm gonna play Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, because you, I mean that's that's kind of like an Uncharted style, like quasi open world, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's still but linear. You as should really to. play that game, though. It's it's much better than the first one, and the first like, one was great. Like work, like work is kicking up. It's 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 kicked up in the week since I've been out. 
and right. it's like yeah, man I've been, I, I've been just playing battlefield one actually yeah I've, I've seen that i'm like are you preparing for something i mean i'm 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 starting to kind of start feeling battlefield five a little bit more okay That's and nice. i was down on it and you guys know that we talked yeah. about it last week yeah so yeah, i think my next pickup will probably they're be actually happy doing a, they're doing a live stream for Battlefield 5 on IGN tomorrow. I think the closed PC beta opens tomorrow, no? Does it? I think I read it online. Or it's in my feed, I think. So I, I think... want to try send me that. I will. I, I Here it is. Me... Yeah, GameSpot. Battlefield 5 closed alpha, closed alpha begins tomorrow on PC. I'll send it to you right now. Oh, it's just on PC? Yeah, it's on PC. I think I think for me, what it, uh, my next game after... Because um, for me, it's... I've been playing Destiny. Yeah, that's the problem. It's 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 the bug is back at grind again, and I'm like, fuck! I need to get this bug out of my system, otherwise I will never get to play another game. Real all quick, this- real quick, like all of our friends in a group chat, all of them, all of them have been bitten by the Destiny Two bug again. <laughs> huh. Not Goose, not Goose. Not me either, man. No. So for me, I, I think the next game that I really want to try to play and probably platinum is um uh. uh Shout out to the Colossus. I think that's the one that I'm you gonna. You really should, man. And then after that, I probably will try to go back and finish um, uh, either Witcher Three, Kingdom Hearts, or you know, go back and finish and try to go for the Platinum for Wolfenstein. But we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll check it out. <laughs> I mean, I got I got like five games coming this fall that I want. Five or six. Yeah. For there's, sure. There's a lot of games coming out that I want. For the, sure. the reason I want to pass Tomb Raider is because I want to, I, want, I really want to get Tomb Raider Day One. Yeah. Just for whatever reason, I'm inter- I'm interested in that game after watching lots of gameplay, and yeah, I'm like, good. yeah, I'm like, I can't justify buying no less like the ninety dollar version if I haven't even played the second one. So I really right. want, I really want to get that out of the way so I can justify it. Be like, yeah, yeah, I can spend it. Yeah, because my buddy, <laughs> my buddy, that's one of the ones he's getting on our shared account. So I'm, I'm super excited to get that. So. Yeah. All right. But, so well, at least that that gives us gives everybody kind of a heads up what we're playing now and what we're going to be playing next. So, sure. It's nice to actually be playing games that are not the the thing that's out right now. I know, right? It, it's it's really enjoyable. It's kind of refreshing to not can... like be like, oh, I have to play this game because it's the hot thing that everybody's talking about right now. Actually, before before we close out, Jeff uh, really got me in that mode a couple of days ago when he was like. I'm pondering what games to play, guys. And he had like this list of games, and I looked at it, and I'm like, man, because uh, you know, me and Jeff were like fucking uh, very irresponsible when it comes to buying games. Yeah, yes. your wallet yeah. buddies, that's basically what you're. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man, I looked at that list, and I'm like, man, Jeff, I have. To. I was like, man, I don't know if I would say because sometimes I feel like I'm coming across like a bragger, but I'm like, I'm not bragging. This is the truth. And I'm like, man, Jeff. <sighs> He's got he's got he's got a great list there that I I also have that problem, buddy. <laughs> right, because it was like uh, it was what Witcher, Bank, Deus Con, Ex, Deus Ex, yeah, Dying uh, Light, Dying Light. You mentioned what? Oh, Just Just Cause Three, Just Cause Three. Yeah, I was like was one oh. more. I think there was a fifth one. I was like, man, you've got a good list there, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure the same thing that attracted you to Deus Ex. It was the same thing that attracted me to where everybody was comparing Cyberpunk to Deus Ex. And I'm yes. like, oh, I own Deus Ex. I should play that. And I was going to say, I played the 360 one, um, Human Revolution. <laughs> Fucking loved that game. Actually, so uh, good. I want to ask you that because I own it on PS3. Um, I'll be honest, like the graphics were a problem for me because it looked so crappy. And the controls felt funny. Is would it would like would you say hey invest the time to get used to it you'll you'll enjoy it invest the time to get used to it because (laughs) it's you don't really want to play Mankind Divided without playing that yeah because I was just planning on watching a YouTube video and I hate doing that but I'm like man I don't think I'll be able to get through this PS3 game I mean that was that's also they I think IGN has like it's like a Deus Ex in five minutes thing where it kind of chronicles that prior to Mankind Divided before that came out they did that video. So if you really feel the need, I would just do that. But Go for it. I don't know. I, I I really want to try try out that Witcher thing. I might I might give that a shot. So nice. But um. But yeah. So I think that's that's where we leave it then. For We're calling. We're gonna call it. Right? We will be back next week with another episode of the AEG show. And uh, as always, follow us on Twitch and on YouTube at Average Everyday Gaming, and follow us on Twitter at Average Gaming Seventeen. So until next week, have a good night.